To the left, we have the TCL QM8. To the right, we have the Sony Bravia 9. And I'll just say this straight up. Uh, a lot of people, surprisingly, in my last video were saying that the only reason the Bravia 9 looks so bad is because it was at an angle. You really can't make this stuff up. Now, we went through over 30 minutes of showing the ins and outs of what each TV does and doesn't do. And again, I don't think we need to go through a 30-minute video, but I'll just show you what I'm showing you here. I'll make sure they're framed up properly, and you just kind of be the judge. I'll give my personal opinion at this point where I'll just say that there really is nothing you can do for the Bravia 9 to make it look better. I'll also see you and raise you by saying that the Bravia 9 has a technology called X wide angle. That's supposed to alleviate any concern for, you know, unfair viewing angle. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to say it like this. Unfair viewing angles. Okay. I mean, what, what's the point of the X wide angle? If you're so afraid of the Bravia 9 being shot at an angle, which in that video it was not, it's depth perception, okay? What's the point? Because here we're watching the Bravia 9 get beaten. And it's happening again and again and again and again. And it gets to such a point where, I mean, it, it's almost like hilarious. Because I, I will always reliably open up my comment section and there's like 10 people, 15 people. Oh, you're not being fair to Sony. It's like... Where where does this idea come from? Like it, I I did resets. I did default the default. And at this point, I'm just gonna say this: the Bravia 9 cannot beat the TCL QM8. The QM8 51G is just a better TV. It has stronger color, deeper color, more expressive color. And no matter how hard you work on the Sony, no matter what you do to the Sony, the Sony is just not going to push out the same level of color vibrancy. Um, and a lot of areas, contrast even. I mean, it, it becomes a game on the Sony where you have to pick between like really dark black levels and like, you know, clarity and things of that nature. Um, by default, Sony is very hazy. For anyone who wants to know, by the way, the Sony is so incredibly hazy this year. I had to lower the black level to 37, okay? For anyone thinking I'm being unfair to Sony, 37 on the black level. That's ridiculous. And that happens because Sony has a problem with haze this year. The shadow detail is way too open. It is so open, it looks like a budget TV. Which is why every time you see it on everyone's video, not just mine, it's the more pale looking TV in the representation. That is not because we're being unfair to Sony. That is because Sony genuinely this year has a TV that for whatever reason is just pale. It is washed of color. Now, I have gone in and put some settings in, and I have done my best to make the Sony look as good as possible. Um, but it just kind of seems like if you're not showing stuff like this, where there's something on a black background, flowers on a black background, or whatever the case may be, demo footage, it's like people, they don't want to believe that they're looking at the Sony Bravia 9 do what it's doing. And again, people can complain about the lines flickering. I don't know what's wrong with Sony, okay? I don't know why it does this for like movie type content like the Spears and Munsell benchmarking disc, but then for gaming, it doesn't do it. It's weird. Like, again, this is something that's only happening on camera. I can't tell you why that is. Maybe their algorithm is doing something different. Again, with the PWM flickering, I, I don't know. I can tell you though that TCL doesn't have that problem on camera. And I can tell you in person, it has more vibrant, more expressive color that draws you in better. And it gets to a point where it's like, I'm not here to make excuses. If TCL lost, I'd tell you it lost, but it didn't. TCL is doing a phenomenal job and better than anyone in the really diehard Sony side of things are willing to admit. You're not going to hear this on anyone's channel more than likely other than mine. You're not going to hear that a TCL beat a Sony, but it did. And I'm showing you tangible proof. I mean, I'm telling you in real time what you could use. Spears of Monsel UHD benchmarking disc of 2023. And you can just go through and look at all that test footage on your Bravia 9. And I promise you, if you start trying to play that like out of the box game, it the results get even worse. Like that's where Sony starts to fall apart so hardcore to the point where it's just, there's no point. There really is no point. If you're looking at the default image and you are not a calibrator, good luck. God bless you. You are going to struggle with that TV. Because every single second... 
that you have that TV, you are going to be reaching for the remote, trying to get deeper, more expressive color that makes sense, like I have here on the screen. It really is that big of a difference. The Sony has the brightness, but that's washing everything out. And the quantum dot color is kind of like useless. They, they, they promote the hell out of it. I'm promising you they're great at it. Triluminous Pro Max. I mean, it sounds great on paper, but in practice, it's useless. Look at it go up against TCL. It's getting spanked. And I, I'm doing my best here to try to like represent both TVs as faithfully as it is. And again, there are going to be some things that I'm not able to capture because, again, it is still a recording of a television. I can tell you in person, the difference is, as I describe it in all of my videos about this, essentially, Sony in some examples like now is a little bit brighter, but the color is worse. TCL has the more lifelike color and expression. I mean, overall, it's just a slaughter fest, like a, a massive slaughter fest. Now... I know that this is something that might be annoying for TCL owners or maybe even regular viewers who are like, all right, let's move on. Let's get to another topic. But if someone's going to accuse me of something, I'm going to prove that I'm not doing anything wrong if I can, if I want to, things like that. And in this example, I, I kind of want to show that, no, there is no room for argument that I will tolerate. There is no room for debate that I will tolerate. It is a fundamental fact that the Bravia 9 doesn't have as vibrant color, as much color, and look as good as the TCL does. You are seeing it here. It is not a small difference. It is a huge, a humongous difference. And again, for everybody who heard otherwise on other channels, go interrogate those YouTubers if you must. Ask them why they're reporting something different from the truth. Because as the truth shows you in real time on camera, there's like literally nothing you could do to make one look better than the other. I mean, like, well, you know what I mean. You can't make Sony look better than the TCL. I mean, you, you try. I tried on camera. And, then, and what gets me is even when I hit reset and I try to give Sony its best shot on camera, I still hear, oh, you've filmed it at an angle. That's why it looks bad. No, guy, it just looks bad. It's okay. It's okay. Sony can make a bad set. It happens. It's unfortunate, but this year, Sony is absolutely getting baked. Now let's go on to the next example to talk about some other things. With more diverse scenery on the screen, you can see, again, more of the depth that the TCL is kicking off. It's dramatic. It's extreme. It's everything that I'm telling you that it is. There are people that want you to believe that the Sony Bravia 9 has finally arrived and it is just here to kick ass and take names as a supremo, supremo, ultimate TV. But really, you just get really bright highlights. Color accuracy is not there, though. Like in a lot of examples, it's going to fall short because that extra brightness is a double-edged sword. And you are clearly seeing what you are missing out. And I'm showing demo after demo because I really think that with an, with an example like this, you will see exactly how much you are not getting on the Sony. The Sony is just, I don't know. I, I don't even know what happened. I don't even know what happened to Sony. I mean, like, again, I'm recording this with the Sony A7 IV. I have said that. G Master lens, okay? I am not against Sony. I have a PlayStation 5, two of them. Okay, I, I'd go and spend hours customizing my PlayStation 5 controller. I mean, like, nobody does that for hatred for a brand, okay? I don't care about brands winning or losing. I just represent them as they are, and as it is, the Sony did lose. And it is pretty substantial. And, you know, when you look at the TCL and it's providing you this picture quality, the only thing you could really say is hot damn. Like... Here you have a brand, quite literally, that every single high-end customer was counting out. They snubbed their nose at TCL. They said Sony has the more accurate skin tone. Sony has the more lifelike color. Sony has the vastly superior processing. And there's nothing a cheap, budget Chinese brand like TCL could ever do to get close to a Sony. This is the TV you buy when you're a poor man and you want a Bravia 9, but you can't afford one. All of this snobby stuff. But look at what's happening to your be beloved Sony Bravia 9. It's getting the crap beat out of it. And it gets to such a point after a while where you just have to accept this is reality. 
Now, I don't know how many people need to hear this. I don't know when it'll resonate with those in the back, but TCL is not the same TCL you remember from three years ago even. The amount of feedback they've gotten, they've listened to it, they've applied it, and now we're at a point where their TVs are looking really damn good. And and not just really damn good from like a, a personal perspective, but like from like even like a future proofing perspective, because the, the conversation is never going to change. What do we want in a dark room? Inky deep blacks. Today, right now in 2024, the TCL delivers inky deep blacks on LED technology with zero bloom. Okay, so what's the next thing? Solid motion. The TCL has solid motion. Clarity. TCL has that too. It, it really, you start to go down the list of everything that it has. And for a very long time, this TV is going to be relevant. Even though it might not be relevant to every person and every person's needs, it is still going to be a very hard TV to beat, especially once you look at the price to value ratio. Personally, I find myself wishing that TCL and Sony came together and made like a little love child TV. Because if we could get like the small highlight control on the TCL like we have on the Sony, that would be fantastic. But then Sony needs the color accuracy of the TCL. TCL's just bang on. And I never thought I'd live to see the day, to be honest, where I'd say that. But it's true. I mean, and every single example I'm showing you here, the Sony is losing. It's losing in the depth. It's losing in the skin tones. It's losing in the sky quality. It's losing in everything I'm looking at right now. Except this example. Now the mountains look better on the Sony. But see, like, it's just, you, you get to a point where only nuanced details come out. Like, oh, that's a bit sharper. Oh, that's a little clearer there. Oh, that's a little bit more three-dimensional there as she gets out of the car. A little bit better highlights in the sky. But then you look at the overall picture and the TCL's like, damn, but that's more impressive. That pulls me in more in a way where I'm like, I, I, I want to watch that picture. Now, silhouetted stuff like this look great on both TVs. I mean, again, it's not like the Sony is the worst TV we've ever made from Sony, right? If I was a representative of Sony. It's a great TV. It's just not the best, right? Even when you look at Sony dedicated demos, you're still going to see that quality of the TCL come out. It's pretty inevitable. Now, Sony does a great job of keeping everything dark in this scene, but that's not always helpful, as you can see in this example, where it gets brighter and you can just see the HDR highlights fly off of the TCL. And the color... Of the orange is more accurate on the TCL where it looks more red on the Sony. It, it gets to such a point where there's a back and forth happening. And again, I don't see three times the price on the Sony. I've said that. I also don't see the king of mini LED that Value Electronics crowned. I don't see that at all. I also don't see Sony as being this master of processing that nobody else can come close to. Because it, as you can clearly see, it trades back and forth too much. And some examples, TCL looks better. And other examples, Sony looks better. And then you're just kind of stuck in the middle. Like, what do we do with this information? Like, they're both doing something so vastly different. Sony now is just darkening everything on their own demo. So I almost feel like right down to, like, the kind of geometry Sony selected for their demos, they know what their algorithm does because they programmed it. And it's doing just that. And I think that's a beautiful thing and everything, but look at the lady. She's got the highlight from the sun right over here. Sony didn't have that as strong. And I, again, it, it's it's not necessarily that it's the wrong move. It's just each TV manufacturer arrives at a decision and a choice. Based on the choice that each manufacturer selects, it, it can go either way. And I think when it comes to processing, that's something we need to address fairly, openly, and honestly, which we rarely see happen in the AV space. In some examples, Sony will absolutely roll over the TCL. And in other examples, TCL will absolutely roll over the Sony. But the one thing remains extraordinarily consistent across the board for the vast majority of the experience. The TCL is way more competent and capable than what anyone told you. And I think when you see it, I think that initial rush of that information shocks a lot of people. Which is why I'm making another video with them both dead center, right? So you can see it for yourself. So you can see... And no matter what, they both are going to do different things with processing. Now, I will also see you guys and raise you because I know in the last video that was a gaming example. And I know a lot of people 
feel a type of way about it. Like, oh, whatever. Um, uh, some people also wanted to see the TCL with some movie trailers, to which I will... I mean, I don't know how well I can show you, but I will do my best to pull up some movie trailers. We are probably going to have to pause them because you can't show that kind of stuff if you don't want to get a copyright. So unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But I can at least show you some examples. So here we are in Star Wars Episode 2. And you can kind of see a lot of what you would expect. The Sony has a lot of brightness. And again, you can see it right over here in the cloak. Again, the whole scene generally is brighter. The TCL is the more contrasty image. You can see that because there's a sharper line here. There's more depth. The background's a little bit darker where this is a little bit more pale. And again, you're genuinely seeing the difference in the color quality and whatnot. In this example, the Sony Bravia 9 is doing the highlight job beautifully. This is where you can see those tiny little highlights come to play, creating a sense of depth and immersion that the TCL is not providing. However, TCL is going for more of the cinematic look over the Sony in this example, where it's preserving all the details and all of your color. And this is massive when you're talking about image quality, because this ultimately is the difference between, again, seeing a crappy image that has virtually no real accuracy to it, just being bright for the sake of being bright versus something, again, more buttoned up and honed in on. The biggest win for Sony, though, is going to be when you get to those lightsaber battles. Because it focuses all of its brightness on the highlights, it just looks so damn good when you get to, like, the saber clashes. So Star Wars lightsaber battles are just going to look amazing. You know, little lasers and missiles firing off. That's where it gets really impressive on the Bravia 9. Again, if you're not doing a comparison, you're not going to know that you're missing a ton of color comparatively. The TCL, though, is giving you the richest shade of those colors. So the red pops more. It's way more vibrant. And pretty much every expression of color is more, again, cinematic. It's focused around the ambient light, the way that a lighting source would react in a room that's dark or whatever. It, there's more intelligent color mapping going on on the TCL than on the Sony. So TCL's color and gradations and Sony is basically brightness. It, it's literally kind of like that toggle switch that we have. You know, it's literally gradation preferred, brightness preferred. That, that's really what we're seeing here. And John Wick 4, this is where things get extremely impressive though. Because not every time there's a small highlight will the, you know, Sony Bravia 9 do a better job. So in SDR, the Sony Bravia 9 will do a better job with smaller highlights, but in HDR, total reverse. So as you're clearly seeing on the floor, as the flashlight hits the floor, it just looks way better. The whole scene looks way better on the TCL QM851G slash TCL QM8. The Sony Bravia 9 is just too dark, and I don't know what their idea for processing is, but TCL is nailing it here. As sparks start to fly in the firefight, Okay, you can clearly see Sony does have a great control over those highlights. It's really tight, really sharp, very clear. I see every particle effect. TCL, the particle effects are a little bit more blurry by comparison. That's a win for the Sony. However, the color quality on the TCL and the contrast outweigh anything that Sony is providing. And that's where it starts to feel way more immersive on TCL than on Sony. Now we're going to fire up Borderlands 3 again. So that you can see what they both look like again when one's not having that weird depth perception thing that other people mistook for the Sony being off at an angle. Again, it really should not matter with the X wide angle if Sony is off at an angle. But again, to extend an olive branch to people who swear up and down that I'm just intentionally trying to do something. I mean... I understand that at this point, people are just trying to move the goalpost. You prove something and then they're going to run and say, oh, you didn't do that. Or, oh, you didn't do that well enough. I, 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 got, I got what time it is, right? But can we just take a minute to appreciate that the TCL has people moving the goalpost? I mean, it's the, it's the simple fact that TCL, a so-called cheap Chinese brand, can get people to move their goalposts. That tells you everything you need to know about the TCL. Look at my comments. They're doing it in real time. They're telling you. They're like, oh, no, he's messing with it. He's making the Sony look bad. These are admissions, right, of Sony's picture quality and what it's not doing for people. Now, we know what it does do right, which is fantastic. But what it's not doing right, it's really not doing right. And again, looking at the image quality, 
TCL isn't as dark as the Sony, so it's not going to have all the contrasty shadow bits in some examples, but for the most part, TCL, it's, it's that TV. And look at the highlights coming off of this machine right now. This is truly what HDR is all about on the TCL to the left, where Sony, because they want to darken everything that has a shadow, their HDR is kind of falling short. And this is where it becomes a problem. Now, if you want to mitigate this on the Sony, well, then you're going to have to open up your shadows substantially and let in a ton of haze, which brings me to my other issue with the Sony. It's a very hazy TV. It, I mean, like, to say anything else, I mean, it might as well have been called the Sony Bravia Fog because that's all you're going to see off of this TV is a bunch of fog, haze, and otherwise generally unappealing things. I mean, let's go ahead and just go into the little bar area here and just take a look at the TVs. Look at the color quality. Look at the differences that you're going to see yet again for the millionth time. And you'll be able to see a lot of what I'm telling you is what's going on. The TCL has more vibrant color. It has higher brightness. And the Sony, by comparison, just doesn't have that. Now, Sony does have immaculate detail, which, again, I don't think there's a Solo Live that would dispute that. But again, when you talk about the vibrancy, the quantum dot color that you would expect, it just falls short. In every example, scene for scene, like for like, match for match, Sony falls short. And if nobody is willing to drive that point home as thoroughly as I am, well, I guess it's a really bad day for Sony fanatics because... As a guy who likes the Sony brand, has multiple Sony products, I am not brain dead. I am not going to sit here and play pretend and, you know, delude you into thinking that the Sony Bravia 9 is some champion TV, the likes of which we'll never see again. Because it's not. The Sony Bravia 9 is... It, it's unfortunate. That's what I'll call the Sony Bravia 9. It honestly, in my personal opinion, should not have happened like that. To where it looks that bad and it has this little color throw because comparatively to what many people in the comments thought was a cheap chinese brand the poor man's bravia 9 all the bullshit i was seeing people say some really hateful stuff against people who don't have a whole lot of money well now look at your so-called flagship right your so-called flagship just got beaten by the tv y'all talked so much smack about because again and real time, you are seeing just how beautiful TCL's image quality is over the Sony. And I can run around and go to every example that I want and show you every little thing. But the truth is, I mean, we all know the goalpost will be moved further. It'll just be, I hate Sony because I'm the only reviewer that's willing to show you Sony has issues. And that their shit, in fact, does stink other than what other people will tell you. Now, that being said... I really hope this helps you guys out. I mean, we're going into every little detail. Look at the skin quality on Lilith for crying out loud. It's like a day and night difference from what you're supposed to be getting to what you're getting. And it's, it's just like she's so much more clear on the TCL where Sony's going for this like muddy, contrasty look that they call HDR that I don't like. And again, if you like it, power to you. Buy what you want. But again... It's not the better TV, and it and it won't ever be, unfortunately, for those who want to pretend that it will be. The reality is the Bravia 9 has potential in other ways, like, again, small bright highlights, but again, it's limited at best, and honestly speaking, the TCL is your winner for literally three times the price less. Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. Let me know what you thought about this comparison down below, and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.